I saw you, you've gotten a selfie with Mike Tyson and the legendary Kobe Bryant. Yep. Which one was better? The one with Kobe obviously now means like a ton. Yep. Like, but the Mike Tyson one, I was on my way to Prefontaine Classic. Nice. And he knew what Prefontaine Classic That's was. sick. Which I think is pretty cool. Yeah. Kind of a track and field fan. He asked, he said, are you a runner? Because I had a shirt that said something about running. And so nice. He was swarmed by everyone yeah. after that. Are you, are you a Thai fan? Yes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's sick. Then he punched me in the face, so. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Talking While Running. Unreal guest today. Some say the king of Boulder. Adidas Pro, co-founder of Tin Man Elite, 354 miler, USA 5K road champ, all around dog, Drew Hunter. Welcome to the show. Thanks, man. Glad to be here. Thanks for coming. We're in Boulder. Coming off the 10. Yeah. Let's just jump into that. 10K off the bat in March, outdoor season. How did it go? And what was kind of the, the mindset for that? Yeah, I mean, it went, I rarely give myself, I don't know if I've ever given myself like too many A-plus a races. Okay. Uh, but it was close. I can think of a few for you, but okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, this whole year I just really had some weaknesses I needed to attack, and one of those was just, I've been really struggling with like longer races, longer intervals, and um, so I kind of was like, let's put a 10K on the calendar. Yep. And figure it out you know we'll we'll see if it's my event we'll see if i'm good at it but regardless the training i've done beforehand will be you know worth it for the 50 yeah right okay okay so, so take us through the actual race first like yeah uh 6.2 on the track yep and then you were kind of packed up yep and then you finish out first yeah so like what was the actual when, when did you realize okay i could probably win this thing i'm feeling all right yeah i mean i uh i'm like I'm like a sponge of information, and I'm also an idiot, so uh, I asked as many good 10K runners that I'm friends with, what do you, how do you run a 10K? You know, I picked Reed Fisher's brain, he's one of my best friends, and also, as you know, had a lot of success at the longer races. Fifth at New York yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then I obviously talked to Joe Klecker, who's very good at the 10K. And, Maybe you've heard of him. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's run a few miles on this road. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, and so I kind of was like, you know, let's let's just feel it out and see, you know, how I'm doing through 5K and go to the back if you need to. Like, just feel as good as you possibly can for the first half of the race. And that's exactly what I did. After that, it was, you know, cover moves, but do not be aggressive until about 8K. And so I kind of just slowly moved up as guys were dying. And, you know, just like I said, Feeling it out, whatever. Uh -huh. um, and then the last kind of like five laps is what I kind of was mentally focused on. I was like, just attack, start to like ratchet down the pace uh, and just focus on winning and race. Um, don't think about time, anything, just Beautiful. just try to win. And that's exactly what I did. I hit the lead with a K to go and felt really good. And I kind of was like, uh, you could see the wave lights up ahead. And I was like, you know, I had no goal of even being close to 27.45. Like, my goal was like around 28 minutes. Okay. Um, and then I saw how close I was to the wave lights, and I was like, well, let's let's get the auto. Yeah, yeah. Let's get the up. auto standard for Eugene. Why not? OTQ. And so I kicked down the wave lights, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I got a nice little, I uh, had a great 10K debut. Yeah. Um, it was great. So also shout out Jesse and Sound Running yep. for putting on that event. Like. What was the atmosphere too? Watching the other 10k heats and yeah, all the, the, just the chaos there. Yeah. Well, I have to say, I finished my race, and you know, you're kind of like locked in. You don't notice a ton of going on. You know, you're very focused and present. But I finished my race, and my teammate Sam Parsons came up to me. And he goes, "Dude, I want you to know, the entire crowd literally sounds like you just won an Olympic medal and you <laughs> caught the wave light, <laughs> which was just a really funny thing." Yeah. I don't know. I think there's something cool with the technology. I know a lot of people are against it or whatever, but it was like, the way like gave them kind of like a story to follow, right? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Um, other than, you know, just, oh, dude trying to win a race. And so it was pretty fun. Um, but then, you know, I got to watch a lot of really good runners afterwards 
run really, really fast. Uh -huh. And that kind of put me right back in my place. I'm like, okay, you still have a lot of work to do. Yeah. To, you know, get where you want to be. But it's my first one and, you know, you got to start somewhere, right? Yeah, absolutely. And I saw, like, before we did the interview, I was looking up what you're up to. And I saw that and I was like, oh, 10K. Wow. Well, yeah. That's actually sick. I'd love that for you. First yeah. of all, people forget Foot Locker champ absolutely hammered and like hammered the field. So I wasn't surprised that you're going to be all right at the 10K. But yeah, what was the actual training like in terms of volume? Yeah. Any workouts leading up to that that were different for the 10K approach? Yes. A lot of the same structure. Um, so still doing just, you know, boring old threshold work, you know, uh, a long run, things like that. But I think the biggest difference was normally our harder interval workout of the week i'd be doing 400 600 you know at mile race pace yeah. 5k race pace um hills 200 things like that um you know when i was training for the 1500 that's what i do and instead we kind of replace those with uh longer workouts with reading connor like uh my favorite one we did we did four quarters mile four quarters mile, wow. four quarters, 1200. And all basically at goal pace. Wow. And in the last 1200, my mom was like, okay, let's, you know, don't look at your watch. Just like, let's run hard, let's cut down. Um, and I ran like 309 for that 12 up Ooh. here. Ooh. And I was pretty happy with that. Yeah, yeah. Which is funny because I basically ran the 10K like that. <laughs> so I thought that was a good workout. It was kind of oh, like wow. a lot of 67s, some 68s, few 66s. And then, you know, three laps to go. Bam, let's start running. Yeah, faster. Beautiful. So that was a good one. Um, but yeah, you know, everyone's training the same. It's more just your mental approach and how you handle the workouts and how you handle the volume. And yeah, um, but I feel like I'm in a really good spot for the rest of the year and some shorter races now. Okay, well, we'll get into that. Uh, we could do a whole episode also just on Tin Man Ali and the backstory <laughs> and the, the growth, but yeah. Give us like kind of a state of the union, just an update on what the program's got coming on yep. the horizon and uh, just how things are going. Yeah, uh, things are going really well. We added two women this past year, yep. which was a big goal we always have from the start. Um, we want our women to seem really bad. And we've got them on. Yes, Katie and Savannah, the besties. <laughs> yep. um, so yeah, that has been, you know, the biggest change I'd say for our team so far. and. Um, other than that, you know, I think like it's a big year. We have such a cool, we have a lot of momentum right now with how the guys ran at the marathon trials. We, someone put out a little, little thing. We were the second best team. If you were to take out oh, the top sad. two marathoners, yeah, yeah. you know, the only team that was better than us was Connor Mance and uh, uh, Clayton. Oh, so it's right. an okay team to lose <laughs> to. Um, Jesus. But yeah, Literally. I think, you know, we have a big chip on our shoulder. We lost a few guys last year and we kind of rebuilt, you know, and. Yep rallied around our identity and what we've been doing but we have so much fun stuff going on summer camp yeah um we just have our, our interns coming out <laughs> for the summer so this is the best time of the year yeah so yeah, i can second that. things are going well and like i said you know uh i think there's hopefully going to be a few olympians at the end of the summer and that'll be really fun yes sir okay first of all he's 26 by the way did we mention that that's insane he's <laughs> just i don't know people sleep on you that's all i gotta say <laughs> also like let him. <laughs> Looking back on uh, building Tin Man, is there a highlight or a memory where you kind of were like, maybe you, Sam Reed, were like, yeah. we got something here. This is kind of, you know, going to take off. I mean, now in hindsight, it looks like yeah. it was inevitable, but. I'd say so. there's so many different ones, but the one that kind of like, the one that I always feel like I come back to and kind of like just put a, have a smile on my face is USA Championships in 2019 we're in Des Moines Iowa uh -huh. we're not in New York City <laughs> we're not even in Eugene you know track town capital right we're in Des Moines Iowa and we post on social media all of our races are done let's do a community run before we fly out the next day we had I'm not kidding probably 200 oh, people show up uh, for a community run and I think it just echoed you know what we really wanted to accomplish in the sport which was all of us love running. Running's giving us so much. Like, how can we give back? Mm -hmm. And how can we have a career that's maybe a little bit, you know, less selfish than we want it to be? I think it's easy to focus on yourself, and that's really important. But also, like, you know, at least try to help others along their journeys as well. Yeah. And it was really cool to see that. Um, that's just one example. But yeah. that was 
that that memory, you know, I think me reading Sam will always look pretty fondly on that That's one. That's perfect. Okay, and then, I mean, high school phenom signs a contract out of high school with uh, Adidas. And we'll get into all that, but looking back, I mean, you've grown with Adidas through the Super Shoe era, mm -hmm. and you've been with the brand for a while. What's, like, that relationship been like in maybe Top Gear or, like, just coolest thing you've seen yeah. as a part of Adidas? I mean, I think just, you know, Adidas took a big chance on me, and uh, not many distance runners had signed pro yeah, contracts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you know, like, especially at the time. Um, yeah, right. You know, there's been some sprinters, but overall, like, I was just a, you know, 18-year-old high schooler who loved running. Like, mm -hmm. that's pretty much... That's kind of just who I was. I didn't really have any sort of, you know, vision outside of that at the time. And yeah. they took a chance and said, hey, we think you're going to be a worthwhile investment. And I'm forever grateful for that and been able to support my family and, uh, you know, build a team around that. And yeah. um, that's been really special. But outside of that, I just think, you know, the two, the, you know, like the biggest, like the biggest scare was when, you know, Nike came out with the new super shoes yeah. and everyone else was kind of like, Okay, what are we doing? Yeah. These shoes are clearly, you know, very special and they allow people to run some pretty crazy <laughs> training yeah, times yeah. and race times. And Adidas responded and wanted our feedback and said, you know, what do you think? And how can we create a shoe that really is, you know, top notch? And, um, and you know, I think a lot of people are not choosing that technology over a lot of the other brands and oh, yeah. for good reason. Yeah. And, um, you know, that's been really cool to be a part of that journey. and. To actually be able to make a shoe too with Tim Anna Lee yeah. was even, you know, more special. Just knowing that there was, you know, they saw the value in our brand and they wanted us to put that on, a, yeah. on the three with alongside the three step logo. Let's link and build, baby. Yeah, 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 I love it. This episode of Talking While Running is brought to you by Sock Moose, highest quality running socks, most affordable price. You're gonna run faster. You're gonna look sick. Go to the sockmoose.com. I'm rocking them. Everyone in Boulder is wearing them. If you're not wearing sock moose, you're just slow and just embarrassing. So honestly, check them out. And thanks again, Sock Moose, for this episode. We touched on it a bit, the high school career. I'd be remiss not to get into some of that. Um, literally, the, one of the, arguably the most illustrious high school streak of all time. The eighth fastest miler in high school, second all-time indoor Gatorade Athlete of the Year, Foot Locker. Uh, looking back on in Penn Relays, mm -hmm. a few times over, is there a moment looking back on that that just stands out as like that that's really the, like you said brings a smile to your face every time yeah just like damn i really did that um i think you know being winning pen relays dmr with my team oh awesome like those dudes are my best friends that's and so sick. you know i have some pretty good individual accolades but like i don't know i skipped prom for that race and nice. uh so it was a big deal for me um and it was you know i think really special to share that with some of my best friends and um so that one meant a lot and i think it was also just kind of like you know a crazy race yeah so. it we'll, we'll drop the kick here yeah and it's hilarious that you brought that up because i wanted to ask yeah to me the dmr is like just an amazing event that's kind of forgotten about yeah first of all i mean wh what's your recipe kind of for like a great dmr roster because you have <laughs> 400 guys yeah. who are teaming up, like you said, yeah. with your teammates who are milers, 1,200, what the hell is that? Yeah. Like, yeah. Wh what do you think goes into a good DMR? Um, I think a good DMR, you have to have, like, such a, a good mix of, you know, sprints, but also really just a lot of poise. I think with most relays, you have to have a good, you know, group that is, that runs well together, but also you don't want to too crazy and you know or too erratic and so i think a lot of people like you kind of have to put some safe legs on some relays oh, okay i think i don't know this is just my take on it but you know when i look at the team we had i could have told you down to the split what they were going to run that <laughs> oh, day wow. and they're that safe you know yeah maybe there's some guys or maybe there's some people that could run maybe a second or two faster but if they have a bad day could be five oh, seconds so, yeah. so i think you know the, the team we had that day and i think when you look at a lot of really successful relays and dmr relays it's like okay what's predictable who can we really nail down to a a good solid split yeah who's not going to drop the baton 
Yeah, 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 yeah. That, that's the thing too, because yeah. you're exchanging with people you probably never have. Yeah. So, and we had a great group that day, and they, you know, our first like fell obviously, so he had to. We had to trust that he'd get back yeah. on his feet and deliver. It was epic. Yeah. All right, that's hilarious, you brought up. Perfect. And then, want to give a shout out to your parents. The hunters are just. Legendary coaches, honestly, they're coaching you now still in Boulder, mm -hmm. but they also coach you in high school. They also coach Alan Webb for a year, and Alan Webb gave you your Gatorade uh, Runner of the yeah. Year award. Yeah, yeah. First of all, is there anything your parents took from mm -hmm. Alan Webb's experience? I know they didn't have him for too long. Yeah. That they applied to you, and then is there anything about Virginia that's just breeding like dope high school milers? <laughs> like, is there something to be said about that area? What's going on? I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. I think, uh, you know, I think the thing that my parents probably learned from Alan is like, uh, the best thing you can do for someone who shows a little promise in talent is just help them get out of their own way and get out of their own head. Um, you know, like keep them healthy. Yeah. Like guys like Alan and myself, like, if we had a full head of steam and some confidence, we can set the yeah. world on fire, oh, you know? Um, and I think the worst thing that can derail us, like it has derailed my own career and derailed Alan's career, was just injury, doubt, you know, the usual recipe. But I think with talented kids, like, coach's goal is help them just get out of their head and run. Yeah. That's what we want to do. I want to be on the starting line, not thinking about anything other than just how well I'm going to run today. Yeah, yeah. That's, I mean, it's, it's, it's wild to hear that you and... Alan Webb could even have doubt, but I totally understand. Yeah, like we all do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that's a great lesson. Yeah. And then, I mean, anything about Virginia still? Like, uh, yeah. Virginia Tech, that Thomas, yeah. and yeah. all that. Like, yeah, I don't know. I think, you know, I when someone runs well in your area, yeah, it inspires other people to run well in yeah. the area, and then, you know, things multiply after that. So I think, at the end of the day, I. Uh, you know, I looked up to Sean McGordy. Nice. He was right before me. Yeah. You know, there's some other great runners after me. Um, and so I think, you know, a lot of people just kind of get inspiration from their their small bubble and it kind of just grows from there. Yeah, that's that makes sense. I mean, you had the blueprint kind of. So, yeah. um, all right, I want to switch it up. Your Wikipedia page, I don't know if you've seen this. <laughs> you've got absolute lettuce yeah. flow oh, yeah. in your photo. Yeah. You've had some different looks. I love them all. Yeah. You've got earrings, beard, mustache, all yeah. the above. What's maybe your favorite hunter look, but looking back? Yeah. And there, is there like a, not even based on talent, just like a swaggiest pro runner that you <laughs> that you could point to, like the best look? Um, it's a good question. My favorite look, I still love the mustache. Okay. Um, my wife doesn't love it. <laughs> and my daughter, who's almost a year old, especially hates it. Yeah. Uh, Happy birthday, almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I've kind of just like put that look to bed, I okay, think, okay. for a while. Um, maybe when they're older. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and then, you know, like, it's, it's funny. Like, my daughter will literally, like, I'll go in and like give her a kiss on the cheek and she'll literally like push my face away <laughs> by any sort of facial hair. So goodbye to that mustache. That's epic. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I'd say whatever makes you feel good and confident on the starting line, I'm now kind of just like rocking this like gross half bad hair <laughs> no, no, bullet. Really good, yeah. Um so but yeah, I, I don't know, swaggiest distance runner. Last it's kind of an oxymoron, but I think there are some. Yeah, yeah. I think it's less about the looks and more about, you know, how you're portraying yourself. And right now, Josh Kerr is kind of just- That's a great one. The baddest mofo <laughs> in track yeah. and field. Yeah. Calling a shot at a world record is pretty badass. Yeah. Beating the GOAT, Jakob, pretty badass. And people don't know this, or, you know, not everyone knows this, but Josh is such a good, nice dude. Okay. I mean, messaged me after my 10K. Damn. And just said, you know, great to see you out there running well and winning races again. That's fire. This dude has like so many other priorities. He does not need to worry about some, you know, that's really American cool. yeah. 10K guy having a okay race. Yeah. And he goes out of his way and messages me. So that's sick. Um, Josh Kerr, most swaggy runner. Okay. Right now. All right. Great one. And uh, Jacob, maybe, you know, we'll get you on the show. Yeah. 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 That's bad. <laughs> no, I love it. That's perfect. Yeah. Um, and then maybe like, Who's a pro runner that you feel is like underrated that you've competed against over the years? Oh man, it's hard to say anyone who's beat you is underrated. <laughs> um, so I gotta think about this. I think someone who is just like 
an incredibly tough competitor and someone that like i don't know feel like probably doesn't get enough credit uh is someone like eric holt okay you know Great like we up. always joke about it but like eric's a really hard guy to beat yeah. um you know i've beaten him a few times he's beaten me a few times but like someone who i know Puts it all out there. Yeah, that's great. Um, and so I'd say Eric doesn't get enough credit for how good of a runner he is. Yeah, and Empire, I think. Yeah. Track club, okay. That's fire. Then I also read on your blog, like one thing you guys do to kind of pass the time, especially on race day, is play some cards. Yes. So, first of all, what is a 10 man card game? What, yeah. what choice? And who's dominating? And any secret, like, yeah. you know, future poker stars coming out? <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> The guys on the team right now are addicted to Settlers of Catan. Okay, there you like, go. Like, <laughs> like it's it's actually kind of unhealthy. <laughs> like, I'm pretty sure Sam's like world ranked. <laughs> I like, yeah. I so, so yeah. yeah uh, right now, Sam is running and then playing Settlers <laughs> online, and that's basically all he's okay, doing. Fire. Um, so yeah, I that's that's a good one. But then for me, like, my family, my dad's from Ohio, and if you want to know one thing about people from the Midwest, is they just play cards all day after the age of 50 it's just like okay <laughs> what are we doing today okay we're playing cards yeah we're cracking a day yeah, yeah yeah so um i love hearts and oh hell those are my two favorite card games okay. we'll play them religiously i go over to my family's every sunday hell yeah. and we'll play cards so okay yeah that's sick and also just to the people how's the family doing with the update your recent father yeah and husband just give a peek behind the curtain. What's your day like these days and how has it changed? Um, it does, hasn't changed a whole whole lot. I mean, more than anything, like, you know, when Ella was first born, it was a little less sleep than I was, you know, maybe accustomed to getting, but my wife is just incredibly selfless and knows that, you know, if I'm running and if this is a career we wanna keep alive for a long time, yep. I gotta get some sleep. So she does- Shout out Sam. Yeah, yeah. She does an amazing job taking care of Ella you know, during the night and, you know, any sort of, you know, wake ups at 3 a.m. she's handling. But, you know, I'm on dad duty all day. So there we go. I, I am, you know, it's day to day is just taking two naps during the day. And around that we're playing, we're, right. you Getting know, pedal ball swings we're in. Going on, yeah, <laughs> we're going on walks. She's, you know, uh, coming to practice when we're at the track. Right. And, yeah. Um, but yeah, like my goal is I want to integrate her and Sandy into as much running as I possibly can and bring them on ra to races and things like that. So they'll be at the Olympic trials this year and awesome. hopefully uh, be able to send send me to the Olympics. So, yeah, yeah. you know, well, that's that's the goal. I'm with them. I'm, I'm buying your stock, I gotta say. <laughs> so it's the 10K. Yeah. First of all, make sure you follow Drew. We're wrapping it up here. All the run details will be on tracks through, of course, you already know. I wanna finish up. First of all, if you could be a pro athlete in another sport, which would it be? Uh, good question. I Thank think- you. <laughs> I think I, I think that I've always loved basketball. Okay. And so I think it would probably be that. But I don't know. Like the more and more I kind of like my demeanor has changed probably to more being a baseball player. Just kind of like, right. relax. I like that a lot. Chill out a little yeah. bit. Um you know, on some bases. Maybe a longer career than a lot of basketball yeah, players. Yeah. So I'd say that. Okay, that's great. Yeah. And then I saw you, you've gotten a selfie with Mike Tyson and the legendary Kobe Bryant. Yep. Which one was better and kind of what's the story behind those? Which, which story um, stands out? Yeah, I mean, the one with Kobe obviously now means like a ton. Like yep. I've, you know, I met Kobe Bryant. He was so kind. And like, I want to let everyone know that, you know, like, yep. like uh, he's took the time. There were other people I'm not gonna name names at the SBs. <laughs> kind of blew me off. There we go. Who were, name names, true. Who were not even nearly the basketball player Kobe Bryant was. That's fine. So, um, yeah, that meant a lot. But the Mike Tyson one, I was on my way to Prefontaine Classic. Nice. And he knew what Prefontaine Classic That's was. Sick. Which I think is pretty cool. Yeah. Kind of a track and field fan. He asked, he said, Are you a runner? Because I had a shirt that said something about running. And. So nice. He was sworn by everyone yeah. after that. Are you a track fan? Yes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, that's sick. Then he punched me in the face. So, um, yeah. That's legendary. Yeah. All right, dude. Well, that's about it for yeah. going running. Yeah, perfect. Thanks for Thank pulling up. And again, make sure you follow Drew throughout the spring and summer and Tin Man. You know, not that they need more followers, but <laughs> let's get them some. Yeah, why not? <laughs> we'll pull from anywhere. That's right. Yeah. Thanks so much, dude. Cool.
got some video. Dude, oh. you guys are interested. Oh. It's Whoa. an absolute mess, but... Whoa. I thought, what the hell? Oh my yeah. gosh. Can I... Can I... Just... Take whatever you want. Mmm. I want the small guy. Sorry, oh. guys. No, you're good. Wait, this is so fire. Thank oh. you, good, yeah, yeah, of course. What waterfall that's blend? Dude, yeah. that's, dude, that's the goat spot. Dude, all right. That's the goat spot. <laughs> all right. Yeah. <laughs> that's good.